it's kind of storyboarded out a little bit further, I think, um, than I expected at this point. So for right now, I'm just going to kind of start it and go for a little while, and then I'll try to wrap it up at some point. With, but I'm not going to get all the way through it. And to Preeti's point, it, at probably no point will I be like, this is what I did, because that's kind of I'm going to allude to it at the beginning, explain why the topic's important, and then give recommendations at the end. I just don't have recommendations yet. That's what's going to happen in the next two or three weeks. So, anyway. Um, oh, who's supposed to do the... I'm going to film for you? Oh, sure. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. I might cut you off at some point, but that's okay. <clears throat> That'd be preferable, actually. You ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, my name is Jason Hankey, and today I have the pleasure of discussing with you uh, employee engagement at Relay Health, uh, where we are, where we need to be, and what we can do in order to get there. But before we do that, before we get into it, I'd like, to, I'd like for you to uh, create a vision in your head for me. Think for a second about a boat, a very simple rowboat, 10 person max on maybe not so rough, but unsteady uncertain waters. Now inside this boat you have five people that are rowing their hearts out, pushing forward towards the destination. You've got four people that are in the middle, just kind of dead weight, they're looking around at the scenery. And you've got one person in the back rocking this thing, trying to tip it over and turn everybody over into the water. All right? It's a pretty grim uh, vision, but as you'll see in a little while, it's actually not a bad analogy for employee engagement currently at Relay Health. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Before we can do that, though, we need to talk about what employee engagement is. Okay, so we've got a lot of word, words on the page up there. I'll just highlight the important ones. Employee engagement involves a rational and emotional connection to the organization, a commitment to the goals and values, and it results in discretionary effort and intent to stay. Okay, discretionary effort and intent to stay is what we're going for. Now, why is employee engagement important? Why is it important? <laughs> As you can see here, according to the research that I've done, I've found out that for every 1% increase in the number of actively engaged employees in your organization, you can realize a 0.6% increase in sales. For us here at Relay Health, that means a potential of nearly $4 million in additional sales for every 22 additional actively engaged employees. That shouldn't be that hard to reach. Companies with 9.3% actively engaged employees for every one actively disengaged employee see an earnings per share of 147% higher than their competition. Currently, Relay Health is at 4.9 to 1, so we're about halfway there. We're getting there, but we've got a long way to go. That, that's a great opportunity for us. For every 10% increase in employee commitment, which is one of those results of engagement, organizations can realize a 9% reduction in attrition. And finally, disengaged employees are very costly. Basically, if you pay a uh, disengaged employee $100,000, you're only going to get $66,000 of production out of them. So now I'd like to show you a few statistics that we've put together with the help of Towers Watson, who is the organization that runs our employee opinion survey. This slide right here was sent to us by Towers Watson, and this is our, this is our breakdown of uh, engaged employees. This is kind of a loud slide, so I want to mute a little bit of the noise and show you what really matters. Does that look familiar? There's our boat. There's our rowboat right there. We've got 49% of our people rowing towards our destination. We've got 41% of our people dead weight in the middle, and we've got 10% of our people in the back trying to tip us over. That's important to know. That's not a great picture, is it? 49% is actually a really strong number, but when you look at it this way, it doesn't seem so great. Now compare that to, with our population of uh, high potentials. Our high potential population looks a lot stronger, and in fact, they're right about 9 to 1, aren't they? That's where 